Hi, I'm Erin, and this is Our Wyoming Life. Erin is ready to place the lettuce seedlings out into the world. Tonight, they will spend their first night away from the comfort of the basement. First, though, before they are totally up to Mother Nature's mercy, Aaron will harden them to prepare the seedlings for transplanting. We wish you well, little lettuce, and hope that you grow into delicious tastiness. So today is a really big day for our lettuce seedlings. I'm always really excited when plants that I've nurtured from tiny little seeds are ready for the big world. I'm also a little scared and nervous that I'm gonna screw up and kill them accidentally. So to help them transition and reduce the risk of dying accidentally, I'm gonna let them harden off for the next couple of days before we disturb their roots and transplant them. First, I'm gonna gather up all the supplies that we need today. I need row cover, hoops, gallon jugs filled with water, and of course the lettuce. I've got some radish and spinach seeds that we're gonna plant today too. All winter long, I save our empty milk gallon jugs and juice containers that I have plenty for spring growing in the high tunnel. The way that I find the easiest to fill the jugs is to fill up the sink in the shop kitchen and then dunk the jugs in the water. I'm going to add a little bit of bleach to the water today. I always rinse out the bottles when they are empty but sometimes they're still a little dirty and then they will turn a nice shade of green after a few weeks in the tunnel. It's not really a big deal but it looks kind of gross. If you do add bleach to your bottles just make sure that you don't water your plants with them as the bleach will kill it. Alright we've got everything loaded up in the gator and we're ready to go. Mike is going to bring over the 125 gallon tank again so that I can have some water. Okay, now we've got everything in the tunnel and I'm going to set up my hardening off area. I want the lettuce somewhat in the middle of the tunnel. It's of course a little colder at night right up next to the plastic, so in the middle somewhere will work best. I'm just going to put the trays right next to each other and then surround the trays with the water bottles. The water is going to heat up during the day and then at night it's going to slowly release their heat as the temperature drops. I'm also going to use a double layer of frost protection row cover to trap the heat from the ground. Okay that looks perfect. I think that this is going to work really well to help the lettuce adjust to the temperatures in the high tunnel. I'll leave the row cover off while we are working so that they can get some sunshine. I want to make sure that I cover everything up at least an hour before sunset. I will also uncover everything in the morning if the sun is shining. If it's cloudy and overcast, I'm going to probably just leave the seedlings covered so that they can retain as much of the ground temperature as possible. In two or three days, I think that they will be ready to transplant. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and direct sow some spinach and radish seed. This is also going to be harvested for our first farmer's market on April 29th. I only have the one row to plant the cold crops in, so I'm going to make sure that everything is measured and marked off properly. This is just going to make things easier when I'm ready to plant the tomatoes and peppers for summer season. Next step involves math. The lettuce needs to be spaced correctly so that it has plenty of room to develop into full size mature heads. Spacing allows the plants to have adequate room to absorb nutrients and water. Salanova's lettuce should be planted 8 inches apart in rows that are 12 to 18 inches apart. All this information is going to be found on your seed label. Seriously, take the time to read those seed labels. All the information that you need to grow is on them. Okay, so no more math. 210 heads of lettuce, three rows fit in my bed, heads are eight inches apart and some wiggle room, and I need 48 feet for the lettuce. The remainder of the bed is what space I have available for spinach and radishes. Our soil is nice and damp still from when I watered last week, but I want the bed to be nice and fluffy for planting. I have my trusty stirrup hoe with me and I'll just run it over the spinach and radish area before I plant. If you don't have a stirrup hoe, you should seriously consider getting one. They are amazing and make the chore of hoeing so much easier than a traditional hoe. It moves smoothly through the top two inches of soil, loosening it up. I have two packages of spinach seed. I'm not going to plant rows, but instead sprinkle it lightly into the bed and then just a sprinkling of dirt over the top of the seed. Radishes I am going to go ahead and plant into rows. We're measuring and spacing. Radish rows need to be 12 inches apart. I'm going to use the hoe and make a shallow trench. Only needs to be about half an inch deep. 
And then I'm just going to sprinkle the seeds into the row. I do try my best to not put too many seeds in one spot, but I'll thin the seedlings once they're up. Ideally, you want them to be planted about one inch apart. Cover it with dirt, and then I'm in the radish business. I expect to see them up in just a few days. I'm going to go ahead and give the seeds a light sprinkling of water. You definitely want to make sure that your hose or sprinkler is on a gentle setting and take care to not pound the seeds into the ground. Over the next few days, I'm just going to water as needed, making sure the soil doesn't dry out on top. Making sure the seeds stay moist during germination is essential for success. Go ahead. Last, I'm going to put some hoops in the ground that I will lay the row cover over. Everything will get covered at night and open back up in the morning. The row cover is just going to help to keep the soil warmer. Clear plastic is going to go back on where the lettuce is going to be planted. I don't want to lose all the heat that we've managed to build over the last month while we wait for transplanting. You can look in the description on the video today for more information on all the products that I used, including the row cover. Sometimes during the craziness of summer and when market season is in full swing, I often forget why I do this. The short of it is that I get tired and I get stressed out. But when spring comes again and I've had the winter to rest, just like the soil, I'm renewed and remember why I love growing. It's fun and it's dirty and it's a little bit magic. A tiny little seed contains everything that it needs to grow and create something tasty and delicious that my family and other families will get to enjoy in just a couple of months. Growing your own food and sharing that with others is truly an amazing experience that I hope I get to help you enjoy. Thank you for joining me in our Wyoming life. Mm -hmm.